Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different and that's writing an expression in Motion. Now you're going to say Motion doesn't have expressions, but in actual fact it does have expressions. They're just buried away under a layer of UI. But we're going to try and pick away that layer and show you exactly what's happening underneath as we write this expression. And the expression is going to be C position equals A position times one minus weight plus B position times weight. Now that looks a little bit complicated, but it's not actually remotely complicated when you actually break it down. However, we're going to start with something slightly less complicated, and that's this C position equals A position plus B position divided by two. So how are we going to write this expression? I'll just turn off my text layer here. I'm going to make a new group. Okay, it doesn't really matter what your project properties are. This is simply for the purposes of demonstrating this expression. I'm going to come down and select the circle tool and draw a circle. And I'm going to call this circle A. And I'm going to right click duplicate and we'll call this one B. And I'm just going to move B over to the right here. And then I'm going to right click, duplicate, and we'll call this circle C. And let's just change the color of C so we can see it a little bit more clearly and just move it to somewhere between A and B. Okay, to write our expression, which if you'll remember is that, what we need to do is we need to have the position of C being affected by a and B, and then divided by two. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to select the C position, and we're going to right click, add parameter behavior link, and we're going to select A as the source object. And what that's doing, because the apply mode is replace, is it's saying, let the position of C be exactly the same as the position of A. And we can see this here, properties transform position of the source parameter, which is A, are going to be applied directly to the properties transform position of the C object. So let's call this link A. And then we want to also have it affected by B. So we're going to have to right click, add parameter behavior link, and select B as the source. Now, if you remember our expression was using an add here. So we wanted to add the position of B to the position of A. And so if I rename this link B, which is what it is, we want to set the apply mode of B to add to source in order to give us that plus there. And we're not quite there yet. We need to divide by two. So dividing by two is very straightforward. We are going to use the scale so instead of 100% scale, we're going to have 50% scale. And both of those values are being divided by two. So we need to set both of their scale values to 0.5. If I turn this off and we select either A or B, so select A, you'll see that C is always exactly halfway between A and B. If I select B, it does the same. So a very, very handy little expression that we've created quite literally in motion. We haven't used behaviors to get around the fact that we don't have expressions. We've actually written the expression trying to dig underneath the, the UI of the link. OK, so let's have a look at creating our other slightly more complicated expression where we had a weight value and we were multiplying the A position by one minus weight and the B position by weight. So weight is going to be a slider that we can adjust to set the position of C along the line that joins A and B. So to create a slider, we're going to come to Object, New Rig, and we're going to create a slider. And we're going to call this slider weight. And we're going to set the maximum range to one because we want one here is going to be a key part of our expression. So we're going to come back to our links here. And these two scale values, which we've set to 0.5 for our simple version of this, we're going to select both of those. That's command clicking them. And we're going to add them to the weight slider. 
So, if you remember, we had a position times one minus weight. So when the weight value is zero, a will be multiplied by one. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to set the a scale value to one. And the b position is going to be multiplied by the weight value. So set the weight value there to zero. And that means that for a weight value of zero, the b position will have no influence on c and therefore it will entirely be influenced by a. And if we come to the other end of our slider, we just want to invert that. So one minus weight is going to give us a zero value for a. So one minus one is obviously zero and b is going to be one. So for a weight value of one, a will have no influence and b will have all the influence. So let's have a look at that in practice. Let's turn this off. Let's turn back on our animation here. And you can see that as I move that weight slider, it adjusts the position of C along the line. If I set the value at 0.25, we're only 0.25 of the way along that line. So I've set up a little animation here where we're oscillating the values of A and B and just gives you an idea of how this actually works. Now you might think this is fairly pointless, but in actual fact this particular expression is very widely used both in motion graphics and visual effects. One of the useful things in visual effects is for tracking because we can get a position for C by tracking A and B. And C might be obscured or untrackable, but we can extract the position using this expression. And another interesting way of using it would actually be to, if you are creating a lens flare, for example, and you could precisely position the lens flare elements along this line between A and B, between the start point of the lens flare and the end point. So there are a great number of uses for it. Now, the point of this really was to have a go at Apple and to ask them why it's not possible to simply give us access to the expression directly rather than to have to use all these drop downs and scales and whatever. We should simply be able to type this expression d directly into a field. There's no, absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be able to do that. So I'm pretty sure that's never going to happen. Um, it's, I'm, I'm not the only one who's asked Apple many, many times to give us expressions. But you can see that the potential is there just tantalizingly out of reach. And once we'd stripped away the cumbersome UI, we in theory ought to be able to have access to a far greater range of operations than we can currently access. So regardless of my rant about Apple, I hope that's been an interesting tutorial and thanks very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again another time.